Hey everybody, I'm Asian Funk. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are at the Silicon Valley Comic Con in sweaty San Jose, California. Um, I am super excited. This is, I think, uh, one of the biggest cons I'm going to this year. And this, um, this convention actually has some sentimental uh, memories. This is where I met Stanley twice, and I think this is also his last uh, public convention appearance. I'm so excited, so let's go and check it out. Celebrity Row. Got all the Terminator people here. I'm guessing that's gonna be Arnold right there. We got Stone Cold. All right, right behind me, right there, is Lou Ferrigno, the uh, original Incredible Hulk. We're gonna get him to sign something in a minute. This cover has a yellow background, but you'll notice it's silver because it's second printing. initial impression of this year was that there were far less comic vendors. Uh, I would say there were only maybe 10 um, on the entire floor. I kind of got the sense that they were moving away from comics. Uh, I do know in previous years they did uh, have way more comic vendors and way more comic creators. And this year there was like zero. There was like nobody of significance there. Um, which was really surprising. Uh, they had a ton of celebrities, and I'm talking like A-list celebrities, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Jason Momoa, uh, the cast of Gotham, uh, the Harry Potter, Weasley twins. The fun thing about going to these big conventions is that uh, people dress up, and so there's a ton of cosplayers there, which is always fun to see. My first goal was meeting up with my go-to comic book vendor, uh, House of Comics. Uh, he basically emails me when he's about to go to a con to let me know what he's gonna have. So he, can, he gives me a heads up, which is really great. I've bought things from him in the past. I always make it a point to swing by his booth just to say hi and kind of see what he has. He had this book uh, that I had shown interest in and he, you know, he couldn't find it or he'd forgot it. And so uh, he finally said he was gonna bring it to Silicon Valley. So this first book, uh, actually, so spoiler, I only got two things um, during this whole con. So, um, the first thing was Captain America 392. A lot of you probably have never seen this cover because it is not really a significant comic book, but what makes it special, this comic book is a quadruple cover. And what that basically means is it has four covers. 
which is really rare. Usually these books are of covers that no one really cares about or doesn't really have a significance. Um, but I wanted to pick this up because one, I've never owned a quadruple cover before. And two, it says Endgame on the cover, which I thought was a neat little thing, you know, like Avengers Endgame. But uh, yeah, uh, and what the other thing that's interesting about this is that all four covers have a 9-6 grade. Usually what happens is the front cover usually has a pretty low grade because it, it's the one that gets touched and taking the hits from being moved around. So the front cover is just usually beat up. Um, the, the next cover usually has a higher grade. Um, and you would expect for a book that has four covers that the very last cover would be you know, in pristine condition, it would be at least a 9.8. The vendor told me that when he saw this book, he picked it up and he noticed it was a little thicker than uh, most of the books he'd been um, holding that day. He discovered that it had more than one cover. And so when he went to his friend to verify if this had three covers in it, his friend told him, no, it's not three covers, it's four. Interior, the last interior cover was so pressed against the third one that you didn't even know there was a fourth cover. Uh, side note, this hand looks really intense. Oh, that's supposed to be, whose hand is that supposed to be? Oh, oh, I get it. These hands are Marvel characters. There's a Spider-Man, some random kid, Doctor Doom, Sabretooth, and Lizard. Jeez, I thought this guy just had a really gross hand. I might crack this open and then have it re-slab just because this is in an older CGC case. Um, you can tell because the plastic um, is lighter, it's thinner, and the the top um, label here is exposed. It's just kind of weird. Like you know, you can just peel that off, um, and then also the plastic isn't as clear. Uh, it it might it might look okay on camera, but when you see it for yourself, you can see that it's it's a little. Uh, dustier, it's not as clear as the newer cases that CGC uses now, so. This last book, um, I actually don't know how I feel about it, just because it, um, well, okay, I'm just gonna show you the book. So, The Hulk Magazine, number 24. This is probably one of my favorite Hulk covers. Uh, this is, this cover is done by Joe Jusco, who is one of my favorite artists. Um, it, it is just like, look how rad that looks. Like the colors. Like, I just love the way he renders muscles and his lighting. Like, this looks so real, like in a stylized way. Like, anyway. Um, as you can tell, I had it signed by Lou Ferrigno, who is the actor who played the Incredible Hulk in the 70s TV show. Uh, he was a, uh, he was at the Silicon Valley Comic Con. Um, yeah, so this book's a little bittersweet for me. Uh, you know, it's an awesome book and I, the signature's great. Uh, I kind of regret getting this signed um and the reason being is because when i went to the booth um lou ferrigno had a little uh price sign on the on the table um saying it was 40 bucks for a signature and i think uh 60 or 65 for a signature and a photo um, which is fine that's like typical standard pricing what happened was you know he, on his table he had a bunch of um printed photos, which is typical as well. You know, they bring their own merch for you to get signed or buy. Um, and I didn't want any of those. I wanted this ma this magazine signed by him. And uh, when I approached the booth, um, you know, I said, hey, uh, could I uh, get a signature? Um, and, you know, it wasn't Lou that answered, even though I was looking at him, it was his handler that answered. And you know, he said, you know, it's, it's 40 for a signature. I said, great. Um, could I have him sign something I brought? And then, you know, the handler's like, like what? And 
and this is weird because I'm still talking to Luferino. I, well, at least I'm looking at him, and the handler is the one who keeps answering, um, and, which I thought was weird. So I had to keep kind of like switching back to him, being like, "Oh, you know, blah blah blah." Now go back and then switch back. So anyway, um, yeah, I, I said, "Oh, I have this this magazine. Um, do you mind if he signs this?" And you know, he the handler looks at Lou. And then Lou looks back at him, and then he looks at me, and he says, uh, it's 80. It's 80. And I was kind of like, huh? Like, it says 40 for a signature. I mean, this is what I was thinking. At the time, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 all right, yeah, no problem. Um, but in my head, I was like, what, what the heck's going on? But outside, I was just kind of like staring at him, being like, 80? Like, why? Um, and... You know, the handler was like, do you want it signed or not? Like, the handler was like, do you want it signed or not? And of course, like, in the moment, I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I do. Like, don't be silly. I came all this way, you know, to have him sign this. So um, I had him sign it. He, you know, Lou asked me what color uh, ink to sign it in, like, you know, where to sign it and stuff. Um, and, yeah, I gave him my cash. He gave me the book. I said thanks, and I walked away. Uh, this was my whole interaction with him which was kind of disappointing. Um, I felt like I didn't, you know, usually when you go to these cons, you, you go to meet somebody that you admire or whatever, and you hope for like a little interaction. Um, and you know, yes, there's like a financial transaction happening while you're there, but you also want to like, feel like you're talking to them. Um, I definitely did not feel that at all. Um, I, felt like I was talking more to the handler than I was to Lou. So that was kind of weird. Um, and I also thought it was kind of um, shady that you would have a, a price sign on your booth stating how much everything costs. But then when I would, you know, ask you to sign something, the price would change. Um, I understand I didn't have him sign a picture or something on his table, I get that. Um, but it's not like I brought like, you know, a giant stuffed animal or, uh, you know, like a giant frame or anything, you know, it was just like, this wasn't, this wasn't any bigger than some of the photos he was selling on his table. So I don't know, uh, and I, I don't, I mean, I don't look like I worked for some grading company. I didn't have a badge or anything. I was just like a regular person. So I wasn't getting this slabbed or anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought it was pretty shady that they would change the price for essentially the same service that they were already providing at a fixed price. Um, I didn't, understand why they didn't explain it I should have said something I didn't I paid the amount that they were asking um and as soon as I walked away I had instant buyer's remorse um I re regretted it um I if I could do it over I would and I wouldn't do it at all um yeah I just I felt like that this was not worth $80 um for that amount of money I could have had a facilitator at a different convention go to him, get it signed, get it uh, slabbed in a case, and all of that for probably the same amount. Um, so, yeah. I don't know how I feel. I feel like this is like a tainted book. Um, because every time I look at it, I'm always going to think about that experience, which is a bummer. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, it's still a great, it's still a great book. I love it. Uh, I'm going to keep it, but, um, and also I should have had him sign. I mean, if we're going to be talking about what I would do over besides not doing this at all, um, I would have had him sign here. I don't know why I had him sign like right on the chest. I'm an idiot for deciding that. I was probably flustered and confused why this thing costs so much. Um, you know, luckily he's signing gold, so it really pops, but I'm like, he didn't, you know, I should have had him sign it here even. I don't even know what I was thinking. I was just completely out of, out of my uh, element. Um, 
So, I, I mean, maybe at some point I'll have Joe just go sign this and then get it slabbed. Probably have him sign it here. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of kind of bummed a little. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was my experience uh, with that interaction. But overall, I still had a great time. I would go back. Um, I, I have fond memories uh, going to that con. Every, everyone else, the, the staff, the vendors, all awesome, all great. Um, but, yeah, that, that was my weird, disappointing uh, celebrity experience. So, anyway, that's all I have for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.